Okay, a pretty new tool that I have recently discovered, not that it's new, but uh, is this great tool or great website called Storybird. Um, it is a free website, storybird.com. You can sign up for free. I'm going to sign in real quick uh, and show you how I've been using this with my students. Um, it's, like I said, it's a free account. When you log in, you can create a teacher kind of uh, setup, a class setup, which is what I did. Um, and when you go to you, it's kind of like your home page, um, and you can create classes. So I've created a class, and you'll see a, an assignment here, and I'll show you how to do that here. Uh, but the first thing I did is I went to my students link here in the, uh, the list there, and you'll see that I have students created down here, and I've given them very generic student names, student three, student two, student one. Um, therefore, students didn't have to use a login name or enter any information like that. I just set it up for them. Um, so student... Or actually, I think I did the last name Stump, uh, and then student, you know, whatever it was, and then you create a username, and I did, did Stump one, two, three, four, all the way up, and then you'll click Add, and when you add it, let me do Stump twenty because I don't think I've done that. Um, once I click Add, it will add it to my list down below, and then it will give you an initial activation password. Then I just gave the kids these, they logged in, and then they can change the passwords and all that stuff is set. Uh, it's very easy to manage that way. I'm going to delete that student real quick. Okay, so once you have your classes in there, just a group of students, and I just keep it generic because it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I know who student 5 is and I know who student 7 is. Um, I can go to assignments. And when I go to assignments, I can create an assignment, which is what I've done here. And so I said, let's just say I add an assignment. So this is a test assignment. I can describe it here. What do I want them to do? I can embed a sample if I had one, which I don't right now, um, or a picture, and I can give it a due date. Um, so let's say this is due on the 17th. And I click Save the Assignment. So the assignment will be here. Now what that means is that a kid can create a storyboard, which I'm going to show you what that is here in a second. Some other choices to you are available to you up at the top uh, is your library. And this is a listing of all the stories that my students have created um, in the library. You can create discussions if you want to have a discussion board um, set up for students to discuss, you know, their story birds or whatever they're creating. Uh, you can do that. It's not loading. And here's the discussion board. Uh, then you can also moderate comments. So I put the moderation on um, just because I teach junior high kids and sometimes they write some goofy things. So I wanted to keep an eye on what was being posted up there um, as well. And then there's some settings you can do, some advanced settings, change your avatar, um, and things like that. Okay, so let's go to this create button across the top, which is really what we're here for. Um, Storybird is a story creation tool. And you can create essentially a picture book. Um, you can choose a set of artwork here. Um, I actually suggest to my students we go down here to this explore themes. Uh, and then at the bottom is challenges. And that's currently not working, but we're going to do the explore theme. So let's say they're writing a story that has a theme of vacation. So I click the vacation button. And what happens is it brings up a set of artwork that fit that theme. So if we were to grab one of these um, set up here, reading on the beach. Okay, and then we have a series of options of different um, pieces of art in this in this uh, particular artist's kind of canvas of art, so to speak. So let's say I want to use this piece of artwork. I click Start the Story Bird, and what happens is it brings up kind of a blank canvas um, for you to create your picture book. And when it loads, you'll see artwork all over the side, all these pictures that fit into that theme or that particular artist. So if I want to drag this picture in here, I just literally drag it over and it puts it in. If I want uh, this picture over here, I drag it in. And if you notice, I slide to the left or the right, it kind of has that whited out area, and that's where I can, I can add text. Okay, so you can put your pictures in, and then if you notice down here, if I move my mouse left or right, it kind of scrolls over for me. Down here, if I want to add another page, I can add a page. Uh, I can click to my cover, put my title here, and then my username throws in there as the author. If I want to change that, I could. Uh, and then you can just continually add pictures in there if you want a full page. 
Uh, some of them you can put up on the top and the bottom and then add your text here. Okay, so let's say I'm all done. I want to save it up here at the top. And then if I wanted to publish this, so I'll click the publish button, which is what you're going to want your students to eventually do. When you do publish, you have some options. Um, I can write a little summary of what my book is. I can tag it if I want my students to put a tag in there. And then down here, if I want to keep it private, which I encourage my kids to do, um, I can choose the class that I want these kids to submit it for. So if I put in the stump PI and there's the test assignment I created, it'll get thrown into that assignment grouping or library. Uh, and they click, they can choose the age range that it most appropriately fits, and they click publish. And so then what that does, the story is now published. If I go back to my classes, this test assignment, I can click on it, and there's that student's book that he or she uh, submitted to me. And so then I can click on it, and I can open it and read it. And it will open it up in a full page kind of editor, uh, and I can scroll through the pages. Okay, not a very long one, obviously. Uh, and I can read it again, send it to somebody, and, and, and do all those kinds of things. The other nice thing is once you create them, you can buy it. Okay, so what that means, if I click the buy button, and this is not something I'm obviously uh, having my kids do at this point, but it's a pretty neat option, is they can download it as a PDF, they can create a hardcover, a premium hardcover, or a softcover book of their Storybird, uh, which is really neat because then kids can actually, you know, have a book, a physical book of, uh, of a story they created. Uh, all free, obviously, except for the book. You have to pay for the book. Uh, but the creation on here is great, and it's been really useful for my, my language arts classes to uh, create stories um, and in a really kind of neat way.